Vaccinations provide a first line of defense against a host of diseases. We're at Vinery Stables in Lexington, Kentucky, where Dr. Rocky Mason of Haggard Equine Medical Institute will tell us more about this important annual visit. I'm Aaron Ryder, news editor of The Horse, your guide to equine health care. Welcome to the Ryder Report. How do vaccines work? Vaccines are, are preparations of disease-causing organisms, and they are prepared in, in one of a couple ways. The first is um, the disease-causing organisms completely killed. Um, the second would be to attenuate or, or modify um, the disease-causing organism in such a way that it doesn't cause clinical disease in the horse. And the third is kind of a relatively new or novel idea. It's actually injecting a portion of the, the DNA sequencing of the disease-causing organism into um, a novel antigen, a canary pox virus or a chimera virus. So the overall basic premise of a vaccine is to elicit a strong immune response in the horse. Usually with the first vaccination, uh, the horse mounts a non-specific immune response to it. Uh, it may store away a few memory cells, but, but basically doesn't mount a strong enough immune response to be considered protective immune response. Thus the importance of boostering the horse, uh, or particularly in young foals who've never been exposed to it, to give them a second or third series of it. So ultimately, by the time you finish with that last shot of the series or the booster in the horse, um, now at this point you've got a strong immune response. You've got plenty of memory cells in the body. So if they ever become exposed to the vex, ever get become exposed to the offending organism, um, then they can quickly mount an immune response to keep themselves from getting sick. So the overall basic premise of a vaccine is to expose horses to antigens they typically wouldn't be exposed to. Uh, and do it in such a way that they don't get sick and keep them from getting sick when they do become exposed to it. What are some of the core vaccines that are appropriate for all horses? Sure. Um, and, and that's a perfect way of putting it. Basically, there's, there's core vaccines. And, and to me, the core vaccines um, for a horse, every horse, would be Eastern Equine Encephalitis, Western Equine Encephalitis, Tetanus Toxoid, and Rabies. And these are the vaccines that you are, are high mortality, high morbidity rate in horses. And with the example of tetanus and rabies, they give your horse one shot of it or a couple shots of it, and basically you can keep from getting sick and they keep from dying. Mm -hmm. um, the other um, kind of risk factor or risk associated vaccines that we often talk about are flu rhino, and that essentially is probably a core vaccine as well, not in the truest of sense of core vaccines, but, but nevertheless a core vaccine for most horses. Uh, botulism um, is another great vaccine depending on where you are and what region you're in. Uh, but most horses probably should be uh, vaccinated against botulism as well. And then it brings on a whole, whole other host of, vac uh, of vaccines. Mm -hmm. Potomac horse fever, um, strangles, mm -hmm. uh, there's even an anthrax vaccine, EVA, um, rotavirus. And those are kind of more dependent on what type of uh, demographic is the horse. Is it a brood mare? Is it a breeding stallion? Is it a teaser? Mm -hmm. Um, so but the basic, uh, in the truest sense of core vaccines for horses, uh, eastern, western, uh, equine encephalitis, tetanus, and rabies. Mm -hmm. You mentioned some regional differences. Are there any highlights to specific areas where people should be looking at specific different types of vaccines to protect their horses? Sure. Uh, you know, region, the biggest regional difference is the um, mosquito-borne diseases in, or mosquito-borne transmission of diseases in central Kentucky are quite different than the ones in Florida, um, just based on the, the simple fact that um, I don't know that there's a beginning and end to the mosquito season in Florida, but there definitely is one here in Kentucky. Um, so that, that's an important point to, to be able to, to, to be sure you include your veterinarian in any of your uh, vaccination strategies uh, to, to properly implement the correct timing of when you need to vaccinate your horse uh, to have your highest peak immunity against the disease you're trying to protect. Uh, a horse that's been properly immunized for years um, will take about two to three weeks to mount a strong immune response so he'll be ready to face all the challenges that you have. So a well-timed uh, vaccination strategy is, is paramount and it's very important. How might this vary depending on different uses of horses? So looking kind of superficially at, at, at the question, you would say, oh, it varies greatly because uh, the horses who are out going out and showing every weekend and coming home are the horses that need to have the, the greatest protection to maybe not those core vaccines that we talked about, but maybe other ones like flu and rhino. Um, and people often forget about the horses that stay behind at home. And they're, they're just as challenged as the horses going to the shows every weekend because whatever the horse picked up at the, at the show comes home and, and, and challenges the horses at home. So, so in terms of a riding stable or a boarding farm, horses travel in and out quite frequently. I think the requirements of all the horses on the farm are about the same. Um, if it's operated as, as a closed herd, uh, a broodmare band, for example, uh, horses not going to the sale or coming home from the sale are ones that are truly isolated in a, in a, in a good management technique or technique style. 
um, then those can be operated a little bit differently and vaccinated a little bit differently uh, as their risk assessment is a little bit lower than the ones that are traveling. Um, so horses who are traveling and actively competing, uh, going to sales, they need to be sure that um, their immunity and immune level and status is, is, is high and adequate uh, to protect them from getting sick. Uh, in addition to that, protect other horses around them from, from, from getting sick as well. Are there special considerations for brood mares? So brood mares, um, once they become pregnant, their job now is to get a healthy foal on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and so their vaccination needs are met um, by trying to meet the needs of the unborn foal. Mm -hmm. Um, mares are unique in that they pass along all of their uh, protective antibodies to the foals in the colostrum. Mm -hmm. So we need to be sure that all the protective um, antibodies that a foal needs for the first several months of his life are in that, in that colostrum. Mm -hmm. So uh, as out of necessity then, we vaccinate the mares quite heavily l later in gestation. So it's the same way. It takes them a few weeks to respond to, to the vaccine, similar to the way it does individuals. And then it may take even a little bit longer for them that uh, they're circulating antibodies to get into the colostrum. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all geared up to, to manage those broodmares so that they have the highest uh, quality colostrum mm -hmm. at the time of birth. So mm -hmm. the majority of the vaccines are given uh, at nine and 10 months of, of gestation. Mm -hmm. Why should horse owners have a veterinarian administer their horse's vaccines? It's a great question. Um, especially, you know, this day and age with the economic hardship that a lot of people are in, um, they can go to the store and pick up a vaccine and give it to their horse uh, and, and save themselves a lot of money. And, and hence the question, why do I need a veterinarian to, to provide it? Um, the first reason is horses can have pretty severe anaphylactic and anaphylactoid reactions to vaccines. Uh, and you would want a veterinarian uh, who can properly deal uh, in a timely fashion with, with that reaction. Uh, horses can progress to, to death uh, from, from these severe anaphylactic reactions. So that's first and foremost, you have a veterinarian on hand to, to properly handle those situations. And the other is, is it provides a, an opportunity for both the client and the veterinarian uh, to interact, mm -hmm. uh, to answer all the questions that you've been building up for, for a year. Mm -hmm. um, questions that weren't important enough to make a phone call or stop in for a farm call or visit, uh, but nevertheless a question that you may have. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, is from a veterinarian standpoint to the, to the client is, is client education. Mm -hmm. I can talk to you about uh, the outbreak of Potomac course fever. I've seen more cases this year than last. or there's been a couple rabbit skunks around, and hey, let's be sure your horse is vaccinated against rabies as well. In addition to that, the, the ever-emerging um, diseases that, that, that pop up um, change the way we, we deal with a lot of things. Uh, it changes shipping requirements. You know, you're, if your horse is coming from Texas to here, you may need some additional things that he didn't need last year. Uh, so when you're ready to, to load your horse up on the trailer and take them away, and then you realize that that last minute, hey, I need something else, uh, some of that can be, it can be uh, uh, intercepted earlier, uh, having had the, the interaction with your veterinarian. Um, so, so more than one valuable reason is to have your, your veterinarian be a part of your vaccination. The other is just to kind of check out the horse. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget about him. Um, check out his body condition, see how he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it had a low-grade heart murmur last year that we listened to, and, and I listened to it again this year. Maybe it's progressed to a two out of five, and maybe it's time to start talking about treatment or, or further diagnostics. Um, you know, you may not, we may opt it not to have done the teeth last year because they were in pretty good shape, and now this year all of a sudden they, they, um, they, they'll need some work. And mm -hmm. having not had that um, veterinarian on the farm to, to, to administer your vaccination, to talk to you about a full, uh, well-rounded preventative health care program, um, some of those things will be left out. Mm -hmm. Where can horse owners learn more about vaccinations? Horse owners can learn more about vaccinations through a couple places. First and foremost, the veterinarian. He's probably the best um, knowledgeable person to talk about vaccines um, you know, that are specific to the region you know, regarding weather and mosquito season like we've talked about. And he best would be able to say, okay, this is the time of year or month that we need to do it. Um, in addition to that, he knows your horse the best. Um, he knows that you go show in, in the summers and not the rest of the year. And he would kind of be able to work out a, a schedule that would be appropriate for your horse. So first and foremost, your veterinarian. Um, good generalized and, and uh, information about vaccines are available at the uh, AAEP website, and that's aap.org. Um, click under guidelines and go down under vaccinations, and all the vaccines that we talked about today are, are, are included in that. Um, Thanks very much, Dr. Mason. That's it for this week's Rider Report. Visit thehorse.com for all the latest news on equine health care, management, and welfare. I'm Erin Ryder, news editor of The Horse, your guide to equine health care. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.